even go to school. And that, that was kind of a harsh hit, you know, because um, I really, really felt for my 11 seniors I've got, because all of a sudden now you just immediately start thinking of them and, you know, what they're going to miss out on, you know, something that as an athlete and, you know, everybody's, you know, a lot of people played high school sports, at least if you didn't play in college, you know what it's like to play your, your senior year and play it on that jersey the last time and, you know, um, celebrate with your teammates and all of your accomplishments you've done in your community for four years and all the work you've done into that and, and then kind of poof, it's gone. Yeah, it, I mean, I, you know, we were talking a little bit again before the show, but that that's the hard part to kind of swallow is especially for those seniors knowing that, you know, some of them, it was the last time that they were going to get to play soccer, you know, as a group, as an official organized, you know, for their school, regardless, it was going to be their last season as a Lancer. And, you know, over the four years, all the work they put in and, and they kind of don't get that payoff, uh, you know, at, at the end to yeah. finish it. Yeah, it's um, just so hard to have those kids because I've got five of my 11 seniors are going to play in college. So they are going to get the experience, you know, playing, you know, for a school and a community again. Uh, but those um, uh, six other seniors that aren't going to play in college, like this was it for them. You know, this was their pinnacle. This was their chance to celebrate with their family and their friends and their peers um, uh, and that one last time together. And um, they just, you know, they just don't get that chance. I got a quick question on that. Coach, with um, with the college, the NCAA going to um, allow – the spring athletes another year of eligibility um how many freshmen coming into college next year are going to be redshirted and what is that going to do with the cycle is the cycle ever going to level out again do you think um how how do you think that's going to affect the seniors coming out of high school right now into college uh i think it depends on the college i was talking to um um, a parent that had a, a kid in college who was who was a senior um, and they were telling me that of the, I think, five seniors that were at that college, only two were coming back. The other three were, were they have jobs, they, they're going out in the workforce, um, they're going to go ahead and, and move on um, and not come back for that extra senior season. So I think it kind of depends on each um, school and their unique situations. I think there's going to be a lot of seniors that, you know, they're, they're, they're going to graduate and they're going to move on to the workforce. And unless they had a chance to play maybe professionally, then, you know, then they felt that that benefited them that way, then maybe they would come back again and play, or maybe they just want that, you know, chance to uh, play again. You know, of course they'd have to wait through the fall and the winter all the way around to the spring again. So, uh, I think I think it's going to be unique to each school uh, yeah. with how they um, handle it and how each uh, freshman comes in and if that changes their mind freshman wise if they want to go in or not. I know all of my players are still going. Well, the, probably the the blue bloods, the the high end schools that went play for national titles. Those kids will be probably the ones that stick around that thought they had a chance for a national title this year. Maybe. Maybe those, the, right. you know, all those seniors might stay on. But, yeah, I, 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 I've never thought about what you just said, and that's, you know, you know well, I'm just going to go ahead and move on. I'm gonna, you know, it's over. I had, see, I hadn't seen that. <laughs> so it, it's basically that rule was made for the seniors for this year. Is, mm-hmm. that, is that what that is for, like, for fourth-year players yep. at college? Is that yep. just for – what sports is that? Is that for all sports? All or spring sports in the NCAA. Just spring. Just yeah, spring just sports? Spring. Gotcha. Yeah. No, KU doesn't get another run with this same team in a national championship <laughs> in basketball. Sorry, sorry, Austin. No. I know that disappoints you. No, I'm good with that. <laughs> yeah. Even though you know what, I mean, just throwing it. You know, we're switching. That's a switching subject a little bit. I do think KU would have won. Would have won this year. Thank I'm you. I'm not a KU fan, FYI. But thank you. I think so. I mean, I I had I think they had the I don't know about most talented, but they were pedigree. It was like raw talent, and then self was had been on his game, so that would have been nice, but. We'll never know. I'm a KU fan, and I would have liked to have seen that. They were, they yeah. were really, really good. And I, I remember watching a few games this year, and I was just like, man, no one's no one is as consistent as KU was this year. That's not, the, not as consistent. That's the double asterisk, one before, one after, then COVID-19 after that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Um, so 
Coach, why don't why don't you uh, kind of getting back to your team? Why don't you talk about each of your eleven seniors um, that unfortunately did didn't get the chance to play out their their final year at East? Yeah, so um, let's start with uh, um, Helen Holberline. Um, this is her second year on varsity. Um, she was kind of one of our utility players. She mostly played as an outside back, um, outside defender. Um, I'm not sure how much you guys know the position, so I'll try to be more specific. <laughs> um, she played like as an uh, outside defender uh, for us, and she can also play in the center defender role. Um, and she's super athletic, um, got a great work ethic. She's also a cheerleader in our school. Um, so she's got multiple multi-sport athletes uh, as well. Um, and actually her, her, her younger sister, Kate, a freshman, and she made varsity. So she kind of misses out on that opportunity to play with her sister for the first time ever. Mm. Uh, so I know that was kind of um, uh, maybe uh, more sad for her family, <laughs> uh, make them getting that chance to do it and for her to, uh, the two to play together for a little bit. Um, then we had Cameron Gossick. She was a second year uh, varsity player also. Um, she was our, uh, voted our most improved player last year. Um, she played on the flanks and the wing. Um, she's super athletic also. She played on our varsity basketball team um, as one of our point guards, or I'm sorry, one of our guards um, on there. Um, and was, I think one of their better players on there, or at least contributed a lot, started. Um, um, she was our second leading goal scorer last year. And um, it's just, it's she, obviously she can jump, and she's fantastic in the air. She's, um, you don't see a ton of girls that are aggressive in the air to go head the ball. Um, but that's exactly who she was. She would go in there, uh, scored a bunch of header goals for us last year and uh, would have been, been great for us again this year. Um, Anna Parker, with her third year on varsity, um, she scored some big goals for us last year. She scored, in fact, the game-winning goal against Shine Mission West in the playoffs last year. Um, and uh, she's gotten better every single year um, that she's been in the program um, and contributed up top as a forward. Uh, then we had Isabel Velez. <laughs> this is her third year on varsity. Um, she also played forward on the opposite side of Cameron. Um, she has great left footed crosses. Uh, she's extremely coachable, um, great attitude. Um, she's really fast. She's actually going to be a, a multi sport athlete this spring. She was going to run some track while she was playing some varsity soccer. Oh, wow. So, wow. Um, um, uh, she was going to try to uh, make that work out with them as much as it could without. And again, it goes back to what we talked about before, like me and uh, Coach Stollard and Coach Poso talked um, um, about, you know, can, you know, is it OK if she does this? They said and I said, yeah, of course she can do it. You know, um, uh, I think that's great. Uh, you know, we just work out conflicts. That's the main thing. Like if we have a track meet and a soccer game on the same day, we all want to know ahead of time which one is she going to choose? Yeah. Um, and so, and Isabel said, you know, if there's a conflict, I'm going to play soccer. And so that way the track coaches know and they can plan what they have going forward for teams and everything. If she was going to be on the relay or just the individual hundred. Um, and I think that just goes back to what we talked about before about, you know, the coaches at East all together, you know, to help the student athletes the best we can. Yeah. So, you know, good. Um, Kate Niermeyer, this is her third year on varsity. Um, she was one of our players who was going to play in college. She was going to go down to Baker University and play. <clears throat> um, she played in the attacking mid uh, center mid year for us. Um, and this year she was going to be our defensive mid. Uh, uh, she's got a great shot from distance um, when she puts it on frame. Um, she, she got so many chances to score last year and just kind of missed out on some of them and just not lucky. Um, and so we're going to put in the defensive role to let her um, be able to shoot from distance a little bit more as opposed to being higher up the field. Um, and she's great at switching the point of attack. And she's uh, uh, going to do really well at Baker. I know Baker's going to enjoy having her down there. Uh, Maggie Shutt was one of our captains this year. Um, this is her third year on varsity. Um, she's uh, one of the best 1v1 defenders we have on our team and then that I've seen across um, the league. Uh, she, we would always put her on the other team's top forwards to try to shut them down. Um, she's quick, she's disciplined, um, and she's great at attacking out of the back. Uh, we have, um, I always have my outside defenders attack up the line and up the flanks. Uh, and so uh, it, it, quite, it puts so much pressure on the other teams when you have good outside backs that can get up the field and help attack and then also um, recover to get back on defense, too. And she had the speed and athleticism to do that. <clears throat> and she's hilariously funny. I mean, she's definitely fits in as one of our uh, captains, uh, for sure, um, both for uh, 
comic relief and for her leadership, um, uh, both. Um, Josephine McCray um, is one of her captains also this year. This is her third year in varsity. Um, she's actually going to go play at Trinity University um, down in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, she um, was our uh, MVP, voted our team MVP last year. Um, she's the vocal leader. Um, she's the, the, the nail that crushes people, that hammer in the back. Um, she goes extremely hard. Um, she's a triplet. She grew up with uh, uh, two brothers. So that's where she definitely learned her <laughs> um, toughness from as being the only girl, two brothers, uh, the same age. So uh, extremely vocal leader. And she uh, tore her ACL her freshman year. So she knows adversity. She knows how what it's like to sit there and not play for a whole season and then come out and then play varsity for what would be three years straight. And, you know, um, she was a first team all Sunflower League last year um, and first team all state last year. Um, uh, next was Cindy Darris. Uh, she was one of our goalkeepers. Um, I have two goalkeepers. I'm extremely blessed that um, I had two stud goalkeepers. Um, both of them are going to play in college. Uh, Sydney was voted first team um, All Sunflower League, and then my other goalkeeper, Akisukaitis, was voted second team All Sunflower League. Wow. So I had, I mean, it's very, very rare that you would have both the first and the second team All Sunflower League goalkeepers. Um, they split time, um, which is why they were able to both get the, the award. Um, and that's what I do because they're both good. I mean, they're both playing in college. They're both super athletic. Um, Sydney's going to go play at the University of Central Missouri. Um, she was one of our captains, our third captain this year. This is her fourth year on varsity. She's been varsity since she was a freshman. Um, um, in the back, uh, just her quick, um, she's quick reactions, great, um, big save ability. Um, she was first team all conference, uh, like I mentioned. Um, she was also voted the goalkeeper of the year in the Sunflower League. Um, she was first team all state, and then she actually uh, won the the Kansas 6A goalkeeper of the year award. So she's uh, she's a stud, and uh, we'll, we'll definitely miss uh, having uh, her in the net uh, for us. And then Izzy Sukaitis is our. She's been on varsity since she was a freshman, also. Uh, so both those goalkeepers came in as freshmen and locked down their spots for all four years. Um, just like I mentioned, she was second team also in Fire League. Um, she's uh, a little bit taller, has more length than Sydney, so she's got the ability to reach those high balls that kind of float. Um, try to the you know the shots try to come floating over goalkeepers' heads, so she's able to get those. Um, she's got that big save ability to be able to reach um, the, you know those those ones that go to the corner. Um, uh, she's funny, <laughs> works really hard, uh, and it's gotten better every year. She's going down to Lincoln Memorial University. It's in Tennessee. Uh, it's a D2 school down there. Um, and both the goalkeepers, Cindy and Izzy, are going to do fantastic down there. Uh, last two players are my Carolines. Uh, Caroline Chisholm, this is her fourth year on varsity. Um, she played on the outside flanks, um, like where um, Cameron and Izzy um, uh uh, Velez played. Um, they fought. Uh, she fought through a bad ankle sprain last year. Her sophomore year, she led our team in assists, and then last year, she got a really, really bad ankle sprain um, at the beginning of the season and was out most of the season. Um, and then she, when she came back, uh, she just picked up right with the left off. You know, a couple of great assists in the goal um, in some of our last games. <clears throat> um, and uh, it just it's really too bad that she, I know she was going to have a big breakout year again, like she did her sophomore year. She came back healthy. Um, and she was going to do fantastic for us on the flank. So I felt bad for her that she wasn't able to get uh, that that final season to, to you know solidify you know um, her and showcase her talent, her skill level that she uh, was able to that, to do back to like what she was when she was a freshman and sophomore. <clears throat> and then our uh, last player is Caroline Nelson. Um, this is her fourth year on varsity. Um, she um, uh, is going to the University of Denver uh, to play D1 soccer there. Uh, she was a first team all Sunflower League. Um, she is the uh, Sunflower League uh, forward of the year. And then she was first team all state also. Uh, she was our leading goal scorer, uh, played up top for us. She's super strong. Uh, she never gets knocked off the ball. Um, and she um, uh, gets in there. 
uh, and her, she's got speed, skill, strength. Uh, she's got the whole package. She can shoot with both feet, left and right, which is what makes her so dangerous because defenders usually force them one way. You know, if you know they're right-footed, you force them left. You know, left-footed, force them right.